Oh, my paisans! These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. Hey there, I'm Social Injustice Warrior Vin Fuso. And so as I'm searching up videos to use for the documentary that I'm either making or have already made, depending on what the future holds, I think you guys know how far in advance I make these things sometimes. So I'm searching up Brian Danovich videos. And what do I stumble upon but this? Hello there, YouTubers. My name's Charlie Chittenden. It is Sunday, the 12th of August, 2018. And I'm now going to conduct a ghost box session with the intention of attempting to communicate with the spirit of the late wrestler, Brian Danovich. Someone claiming they're contacting the Spartan Swinger just a mere four days after he died. Now, I don't know that Brian ever said no to an interview, so I can imagine why you'd want to contact him. The man was so full of energy that if anyone was going to carry that over to the other side, then, well, it would be him. I mean, the man would probably put life in afterlife. So not a bad choice, interviewing-wise. And being that he, like myself, is Italian, the dude knows how to talk, and he will let you hear it. That was one of his favorite things to do. And I can't tell you how many hours of my day were spent bullshitting with Dano about both nothing and everything. I mean, granted, we talk a lot less now, given the whole, you know, dying thing, unfortunately, but... But who knows? Maybe this nobody's gonna contact my friend. Maybe... Maybe he has a message to relay to all of us. So I shall turn on the PSP7 here, which is one of the most popular and effective ghost boxes on the market. I shall go into reverse sweep, and we'll see what we can get. So let me just try to wrap my head around this. There's a ghost box that can contact ghosts, and in order to contact them, all you gotta do is simply speak into it? Huh, I'm sold. Flawless. I mean, what, did Danny Phantom's parents make this device? Is this a prop from the Ghostbusters 3 movie that we never got? Is that a scene on TV replica of something from Ghost Hunters? Oh, do you take requests? Can you get in contact with Beetlejuice? Or at least Roseanne Barr's career? Are there any spirit beings present, please, who can bring forward the spirit of the late wrestler, Brian Danovich, please? <laughs> Brian Danovich, if you speak into this device, I can hear you. Okay, that'll give him. That sounds like that could have been Dano. I mean, he could not berate technology when he had a pulse. I wouldn't expect him to figure it out after the fact. I mean, I actually had to make him a Gmail, a Twitter, a Facebook. I had to teach him how to operate Google Hangouts every time the guy came onto stream. It was like it was, like it was new to him, even though I taught him it. So who knows? Maybe... This is real. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Maybe I'm just a non-believer. So let me just put my cynicism aside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to be a cynical, sardonic prick here. And by all means, please tell me the words of wisdom my dead best friend has to leave onto this world. Brian Danovich, you are known as the Spartan Swinger. Do you have a message for your fans, please? A one-word answer. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Brian didn't do one-word answers. The guy spoke in constant run-on sentences. The guy spoke like he was constantly on entertainer mode. Brian didn't give one-word answers. He cut promos. If you spoke to Brian, you'd hardly have time to ask him a question because he'd have so much to say and would find a way to transition in between topics throughout. Sometimes without you ever needing to reply. Brian Danovich, you were released from your WWE contract in September 2005. Do you have a message for your family, please, Brian? And I come to you with the greatest of respect for you and for your family. Okay, what the fuck do those two things have in common? Like, what do they have to do with each other? Hey, Chris Farley, you were a cokehead. Do you have a message for the audience at your first stand-up gig? Freddie Mercury, you got AIDS. What was it like working with Queen? Do you see how those two statements don't add up? Or they don't necessarily follow each other, like, at all?
Brian Danovich died on the 9th of August or around the 9th of August 2018, aged 38. Brian, the cause of your death hasn't yet been confirmed. Can you explain to us how you died, please? Did you take your own life? Did you take your own life? And this guy thought, well, we don't know the cause of death yet, so I better just leave this out entirely just in case I get it wrong. Smart move. These are really weird questions to ask a dead man, don't you think? I mean, none of them seem even remotely necessary or having to do with anything at hand here. Brian Danovich, who is your favorite wrestler of all time, please? Okay, I'm going to go now. I'd like to now this one, this is the one that pisses me off. This is the one that almost gets me a little angry. Because in no way, shape, or form was Akeem the African Dream Brian Danovich's favorite wrestler. His favorite wrestler has always been, and, well, I mean, I would say will always be, but I, this, you know, period, move on, it's already, it always has been, Magnificent Morocco. I know this because he never shut up about the guy. He talked about the guy like he was his life role model. It's almost like when speaking about him, he, he, he went to a childlike state. And I even went on to confirm this with his best friend, Rory Fox. And there it is, see? Magnificent Morocco. That's why he always wore the tie-dye. Thank you all for your communication. And I mean you all the greatest of respect. Can anybody say goodbye to me, please? Okay, goodbye. Overall, I don't think that I really needed to prove this was false. I think most sound-minded individuals would have come to that conclusion themselves. Except for Betty Lucky over here, who goes, Another great connection today! Thank you, Charlie! You'll be on the ghost box in another few months, so I'm, I'm not gonna hold it against her. But I did, however, feel it was necessary to call out shitty content like this. I mean, sure, I could go through the rest of this guy's catalog of videos of him talking to himself and acting like it's a dead famous person responding back. But I'm not going to do that because I did it with this one, and that's really all you need. It's the same format over and over and over again. These people who are looking to convince you that they're channeling the dead, connecting with the lost, and looking to gain a buck off it, people who are looking to exploit a corpse when it hasn't even been dug a hole for, are weak-minded, spineless, ballless, and gutless individuals who don't even deserve the time of day that I've afforded them here today. Now here's the thing, everyone who claims to be a ghost expert or a paranormal investigator, they're either A, full of shit, or B, insane. Like most of the people who want to scam you, they will at least put a little extra effort in. They'll close their eyes and claim they're channeling the dead. They'll move a piece on a Ouija board somewhere. They'll travel to an important location in the deceased person's life and say that they feel a connection or some lame shit like that. This dude, this dude sets up what looks like a probably overpriced guitar amp on the corner of his living room floor and goes, Charlie Manson, is that you? I mean, how is it possible that I'm now yearning for the assholes who channel the dead during live streams and mispronounce their names while proclaiming that there are pedophiles in heaven? How is it possible that you suck that bad that you make those people look like they're doing something right? So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. 
And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Uh, the V-Tart, oh.